time permits, we will cover of what was left uh, yesterday. Perfect? Fine. Uh, today, we are going to talk about strategic analysis and planning. Okay. Now, the big question here is before we do anything, right, we should ask why. Isn't it? That's the basic question that we should ask before going. Now, why do we need to do strategic analysis and planning? Okay. Basically, in strategic analysis, we are going to do two types of analysis. One is the environmental analysis and second one is the organizational analysis, isn't it? For environmental analysis, doing just the analysis does not serve the purpose, isn't it? At the end of the analysis, we should be able to come out with a document which should help the management in their decision making, strategic decision making, right? Any clue as to what is the outcome or the final document that we are going to arrive at by the completion of environmental analysis? What document is going to be? Uh, at the end of this analysis, there should be a document presented to the management, strategic management, so that they can take a strategic decision. What document I am talking about? Please? A little louder? No. You didn't get my question? Okay, let me ask. In, in strategic analysis, we are going to cover two parts. One is the environmental analysis, analysis of the environment, and the other one is the organizational analysis, which is internal. And now, at the end of both these uh, analysis, we need to come out with a document, okay, which can be presented to the management for strategic decision making. Otherwise, what is the what is the purpose of doing this analysis in the first place? Yes. Okay. First one is, and it is environmental opportunity and threat profile. So what we are going to do is we are going, going to come out with a profile which is going to tell us, isn't it? What are the environmental strength and the opportunities available so that on the basis of that document, the management can take a strategic decision. Got it? Similarly, for the organizational analysis part we are going to come out with two documents, not one, but two documents. What are those? OCP, Organizational Capability Profile and uh, or, uh, or, or uh, Competitive Advantage Profile, CAP, Competitive Advantage Profile. Fair enough? So, once we are uh, able to stage, our purpose uh, of doing this analysis is achieved, is not it? Now, uh, if you remember yesterday, I had showed you this architecture of strategy, has not it? Wherein we try to figure out how the financial performance of a firm is of paramount importance, has not it? Because the uh, fiscal responsibility is the one which is a prerequisite for a social responsibility, has not it? And we can aim for uh, above average profitability levels if we have some kind of a competitive advantage, either in the form of differentiation, uh, low cost, quick response or whatever it is or a combination of all those, got it? Now, in today's session, what we are going to do is, we are going to find out this structural, structural positions. In fact, uh, uh, Professor Mittal has already covered, yes sir. Yes. I think the PA system. Uh, this part, structural position, is about the Porter five models. Okay, five five forces model, which has already been covered. So we will not uh, go into the depth of it. Probably wherever required, we are going to. I mean, for our understanding, we will take an example or so, and then uh, go forward. And the other part, process execution, is the organizational capability. So, we are going to cover these two parts now. Okay. Here, I mean, we have heard it n number of times, has not it? So, there is no point spending time over here. We straight away move forward. Got it? Uh, this again. Okay. Now, for our understanding, anything, any outside event which has the potential to favorably impact the organizational profitability or growth is an opportunity, 
correct i mean let us uh, forget the bookish definition let us try to understand what it is okay any outside event which has the potential to adversely impact the profitability growth reputation of the organization is a threat correct what the organization poses in terms of assets in terms of capabilities in terms of competency is an strength is a strength is not it and uh, uh, factors for which we are uh, we are having a weakness or, or we are vulnerable are weaknesses of the firm correct how many of you have uh, uh, watched a movie called uh, dhamal it is a comedy movie you have seen that right now one particular scene wherein you know kind of there are these four uh, guys and a leopard comes in right and immediately what Ritesh Deshmukh does is he ties off the laces of his sports shoe is not it and uh, Javed Jafri asks him is shoe less kyun baan raha hai kya tujhe lagta hai tu tendue se tez bhaag jayega is not it and what was his reply sale tendue se kisko aage bhaagna hai mujhe to tum tino se aage bhaagna hai are you getting it <laughs> so this is like a threat is not it so when a threat is coming is not it at least you be prepared so that your competitors take the measure of the bone and you are spared right? and when there is an opportunity you should have the capability so that you should have that aggression to grab that opportunity to the best of your uh, capabilities for the organizations better. now there are some of the examples of strength weaknesses opportunities and threat just just i think go through it and you will be able to understand there is no point uh, deliberating on it, it further in case you have a, a doubt uh, please ask and we'll discuss it about so got a clear idea now how does an external environment influence strategy how does an external influence uh, uh, influence the strategy of a firm first it it provides the opportunities and holds the threat okay it shapes the rule as to how firms should compete in a given industry scenario influence the availability of critical resources when you do analysis you not just do the analysis for a opportunity or threat you also try to figure out where you are going to get your customers from where you are going to get your employees from right when you are going to get your suppliers from so all these additional i mean these are you can say bonuses of scanning the environment or doing a sort analysis and affecting the likely returns from alternative investment because uh, we all know that there is an opportunity cost to everything if our money would not have been invested in project a we should have that funding or investment available for project b now we are going to talk about two kind of environments one is the general environment second one is a competitive environment okay uh, general environment we are not going to uh, deliver much i mean or, or uh, deliberate much on it uh, we have already talked about it right demographic socio cultural political legal technological macroeconomic global these are all a part of the general environment and in this slide what i have done is uh, i have taken one component from each of these uh, uh, environments and try to figure out for which industry it is having a positive impact for which industry it is having a negative impact and for which, for which industry it is neutral right for example when you talk about uh, demography age is one component of the demographic demographics isn't it so old age the, when the population is aging what is which industries which are going to get benefited out of it medical. obviously when people age they have got more need for medical services so that industry is definitely going to get benefited or it, it is going to have a positive impact on it Co college and universities they are going to have a negative impact because what they want is always the younger generation got it and a industry like steel it is neutral you know whether the population is younger or older hardly matters got it so similarly i have tried to give one or two examples right or components of each of these uh, environments and an ex uh, the industries which are getting affected positively neutral or adversely by these developments now there are two things about an environment what are those what is the complexity of that organization 
uh, of the environment and second one is variability. You can have a simple environment, you can have a complex environment, is not it? You can have a stable or it can vary constantly, a dynamic, correct? Now, based on this, we can have two types of things. The organization, the environment which is too complex and which varies constantly, we can call it a turbulent environment and where the structure is a little simpler and it does not vary much, we call it a simple uh, environment. The nature of simple and turbulent, a simple environment, the, if, uh, if the rate of change is quite predictable, is not it and you can actually uh, uh, figure out what is going to happen and take decisions accordingly. You can take the historical perspective and extrapolate it for the future. Profitability is linked with growth and the environment lacks surprises. So, there is no positive neither negative surprises. Whereas, a turbulent environment is entirely different. Growth does not extrapolate. That means, you cannot say for sure what is what has happened in the past is going to be happening in the future. Uh, historical strategies are suspect, it does not work. Profitability does not follow growth. The future is highly uncertain and the environment is full of surprises, both positive as well as negative. Uh, what we call today's environment, is it a simple one or a turbulent one? It is a turbulent one, is not it? Because uh, there are so many te technological advances, there are so many political uncertainties and all that you know kind of it is very difficult to predict. So, that is why we are in a turbulent kind of an environment today. Now, we also scan the environment for ideas, business ideas, is not it? What happens is when you are doing a competitor analysis, right, you chanced upon a product idea which you think yes, this is what we can adopt immediately. Is not it? Now, of course, that product idea has to be uh, in synergy with the vision and mission of the company, is not it? And if you find there is a need which has not been addressed by anybody else, you are the first one to address that particular need, come out with a product or service to add, get that need. Uh, for as, as far as ideas are concerned, you can have three kinds of ideas. Type A ideas are those ideas where the product or service is available somewhere else, but it is not available in your market, right. So, you can get, I mean you do not have to do any innovation, just get that product and idea and serve the present market. Type B ideas are new products, new technologies and it is going to create a new market altogether, right. And type C ideas are what are the new benefits that can be offered to a particular uh, group of customers, right. So, the external environment uh, also springs out these surprises which again are a bonus. We have not gone there for these ideas, but during our analysis, right, we chanced upon these ideas. This is a summary of both. The first part covers the general uh, environment and the second part covers the competitive environment. When you talk about competitive en environment, the first one is industry analysis. Now, industry analysis covers five distinct parts. What are those? First one, industry setting. Industry setting is basically the market structure whether we are operating in a monopoly situation, oligopoly situation, monopolistic competition situation or a perfect competition situation. Uh, second one, uh, I am sorry, industry structure. Uh, industry setting is what kind of an industry we are? Is it a structured industry? Is it a fragmented industry? It is a maturing industry, declining industry. Basically, the if the industry is growing, that means the market is growing, is not it? If the industry is stable or matured, that means, the markets are uh, has a, has a pot, you know limit to growth, is not it? If the industry is fragmented, that means, we need to have focus in marketing our product or services into the different fragments or if possible try to unite those fragments and create a bigger market for that. Industry attractiveness, normally majority of the uh, uh, companies which, which get above average financial performances are the ones where the industry attracti attractiveness is very, very high. And what are the factors of industry att attractiveness? Nature of demand. Of course, if the nature of demand is growing, everybody is growing along with that demand. 
right? If it is not, that means somebody is eating away into somebody else's share. And sooner or later, it is going to affect. Profit potential. There are some products where profitability is higher. There are some products where profitability is pretty low. And when the competition grows, it adversely affects the profitability. Got it? Entry and exit barriers. Normally, in, in oligopolistic kind of situations, isn't it? There are always very high entry barriers. Got it? Entry barriers, uh, both uh, you know, uh, financial barriers as well as non-financial barriers. Industry performance, profitability, operational efficiency, efficiency innovation, and technological environments. And then comes the five forces. And then in the last, we do a competitor analysis, what our competitors uh, are doing. Now the next part is the competitive environment. It refers to the situation facing an organization with its, within its own area of operation. That means the general environment is the, the outside world actually, the, the entire universe. And competitive an, uh, analysis is a subset of the larger industry wherein we are focusing on the threats and opportunities pertaining to our area of operation. So we are eliminating the rest. And all those five forces, right, if any one of them, right, assumes significance, what kind of an impact it is going to have on the industries uh, or the attractiveness and profitability of the firm? Of those five forces, isn't it? If any one of them, right, is going to have a significant impact or it is going to assume weight, what will happen to the attractiveness and profitability of the firm as a whole? It will reduce, isn't it? That is what I have tried to, uh, you know, kind of balance things out. On one side is the attractiveness and profitability of the firm and on the other side are those five factors. That means the organization should always try to ensure that none of these five forces, right, significantly affects its operations. Try to steer away from those forces as far as possible. Now, first one, I will just briefly go through those five forces. Uh, threat of new entrants. Of course, if the exit barriers are not there, anytime a new entrant can come in, is not it? So, what the existing firms do is form various barriers. What are those barriers? Economies of scale. If you are big enough, isn't it, and you enjoy economy of scale, a new entrant is obviously is not going to able to match your economy of scale. Second, learning or experience curve. You have got some experience in that particular field and you have learned from that business, isn't it? So you are in a position to do business better than a new entrant. Cost disadvantages independent of scale. Economy is one which, you, uh, which, which uh, helps you get a cost advantage because of the scale. Whereas, uh, let us say you are a steel producing company, got it? Now, a steel producing company consumes a lot of coal to run the furnaces, is not it? Now, you can have two options. Either you have the right, my mining right to a coal mine or you purchase it from outside, is not it? Now, if you have been a well established player, isn't it? And you have got good rapport with the government and all, you have able to manage the mining rights of a particular mine. Obviously, a new entrant is not going to have that. So, that means they are going to procure coal from outside, isn't it? So, that puts him into a disadvantage. Cost, supplies and there are so many other factors which you are sitting pretty tight on it. Product differentiation. Because you have been there in the marketplace for so long, you have been functioning profitably, so you have got enough money to invest in R&D, which is going to come out with new product features, which is going to give you a product differentiation, which a new entrant may not have. Capital requirements, majority of the industry, especially in the manufacturing sector, they require huge money, huge amount of money, is not it? Your internally generated money or by virtue of your goodwill in the marketplace, your ability to attract outside lower cost is much higher, isn't it, than a new entrant. 
switching cost what is this it is the cost to a customer right if he switches one supplier versus other isn't it in fact microsoft is a master in this they uh, you know the product uses only a particular software it does the device so what do you do you are stuck with that company almost forever getting it so so there is something which they the switching cost is going to be very very high and the customer would prefer to stay with the existing supplier than to go in for a new one now how the bargaining power of supplier is going to affect uh, there are these factors to be considered are relative relative lack of importance of the buyer right uh, of one buyer group as compared to another the example here given is that of macdis isn't it for coke as a company is mcdonald one of the very very important customer then a casual diner of course it is isn't it so macd would try to isn't it uh, um, uh, or, or coke could try to get associated with macd uh, for, for a longer period of time and and uh, they they have this strategic alliance isn't it so obviously uh, um, uh, those uh, alliance they would like to send other customers are not very important isn't it so coke can right afford to right uh, uh, take other customers not for granted i would say but pay less importance than their major customers second importance of the supplier product to the customer right mcdonald knows that without coke its branding is almost half because it is a you know kind of mcd coke combination which sells getting it a uh, greater concentration among suppliers than among the buyers there are places where the concentration of supplier is more and that is why they tend to thwart the uh, in the domination by the buyers take it or leave it we are not going to reduce the prices fourth switching cost the same thing applies here as well switching from one um, um, supplier to another and last one credible threat of forward integration by suppliers it is always there isn't it at any point of time a supplier may say no i will make the products you are making forward integration is getting into the customer's territory correct next buyers bargaining power of customers uh, undifferentiated or standard supplies if the products if the supplies are undifferentiated or standard the uh, user has a choice isn't it so in this case the buyer will have a upper hand and that is why it is very important that companies come out with product which has got clearly differentiated benefits correct otherwise the buyer will have an upper hand credible threat of backward integration what is backward integration getting into the supplier's shoes isn't it in fact the best example would be house brands if you walk into a, a big bazaar right or a food bazaar uh, have you seen you know kind of they have a house brand for almost any kind of product right tasty treat right you will get a tasty treat ketchup right which is priced around 10 rupee lower than a kisan or a maggi ketchup correct a biscuit for the same weight is the same gram same packet size you will get it 3 rupees cheaper so what they are doing is they are getting into the supplier so yes we also sell others but try to promote our products more right by offering those cost benefits to the customer accurate information about the cost structure of the suppliers now if a buyer is uh, trying to dominate the supplier right you just not do not accept the pricing quoted by the supplier what you should do ask them for a cost break up for example if let's say uh, maruti right they are making you know kind of cars in lakhs isn't it each car needs to get fitted with four tires 
got it that means they need 4 lakh tires a month isn't it so even if they are able to save 10 rupee per car per tire what is the kind of saving that is going to happen 4 lakh into 10 rupee which is 40 lakh saving isn't it so what they do is they are not just going to accept the rate quoted by the tire manufacturer they say give me the breakup of this rate quoted and they will force them this is the raw material cost this is our overhead cost this is what is the total hour margin is this and that is what we are charging Got it? and if they ask the same cost structure from let us say JK tire and uh, MRF and uh, Goodyear and Continental and all right they look comparing those four figures they will be able to know who is telling the truth and who is trying to fudge the figures is not it and accordingly they can negotiate better with the suppliers. Customers price sensitivity there are some customers who are sensitive to prices there are some customers who are not sensitive to it. especially in the industrial segment they are very very price sensitive is not it in the consumer segment segment the uh, uh, company may afford right to play around on prices. For example, if, if iPhone 6 is priced at 62,500 or 64,500 it hardly matters. Anybody who wants to buy iPhone uh, 6 will buy and the customer does not uh, is, is not that price sensitive right. But as I told you for a tire a car assembler the price of a tire is very particular about it even a 5 rupee 10 rupee thing is going to be making much of a difference to them and a greater concentration in buyers industry than in suppliers industry and relatively larger volume purchases. What is this? If the buyers are concentrated at a place they will have an upper hand over the suppliers is not it because what happens is though they are competitor as far as their finished products are concerned as far as their purchasers are, purchases are concerned they work in cooperation with each other. For example, if let us say there is one vendor which has angered the purchase manager of company A, has not it? And the vendor might be thinking that forget it, I mean he it is just one of the players and I have got three more players to go, right. What this guy is going to do? Immediately inform all the three that this guy has done this to me, so be careful, stay away from this. And when he approaches the next person, is he going to get the same kind of response? No they are going to treat him a little differently. So, they need to be very, very careful in this. Substitute products, availability of substitute does one thing for certain. What is that? It limits the price. 